On this week's episode of Friend Code, we're talking about the Game Awards announcements, E3's importance, and the top 10 lifetime GameCube games. Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Friend Code. I'm your host, Michael Damiani. On this week's episode, I'm joined by Bradley Ellis. Hello. Ian Hink. Hi. No more achievements, huh? Oh, I forgot about it. Uh, achievements. There we Gotta go. Gotta keep that gimmick up. <laughs> Didn't feel right without that. Yeah, sorry. Um, we got a, we had a lot of uh, stuff happen recently with uh, Jeff Keighley's The Game Awards. Woo! Happened in uh, last Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was pretty good stuff, actually. What did you two think about it if you got to check it out? Uh, pretty good. Yeah? There's a one giant announcement that made me stand up, actually, when I saw it. Oh, yeah. We'll get into it. I think I'm I know sure the one you mean. Yeah. I love that you just suddenly had a Capri Sun. Dude, don't ruin the gimmick. I'm like a There's magician a just busting it out. <laughs> you don't even notice me doing this. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do. I'm invisible. Uh, How do you like it, Ian? I loved it. I thought it was the best show that Jeff's put on to date. There was no, Ooh. there were no like real awkward things in it. Nothing r- seemed to go wrong. I had a good time. I liked it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it didn't have any like besides the one that was the biggest thing. There wasn't any like announcement that made me like pass out or anything but oh sure <laughs> there's some good stuff in it didn't feel as long as it actually was yeah oh, usually yeah. those three hours feel yeah like just totally drag out but it was pretty good stuff um let's get into those announcements though not not everything that was rumored to be there ended up being there no. um, <laughs> Yeah, that was a little interesting there were rumors about like metroid prime 4 being there or metroid prime trilogy who knows? Again, like this is the, in the realm of Nintendo. You should know, like people need to stop taking rumors as fact. This is like a sure. r- yeah. long-running thing. Until it's actually announced, just don't you know? Believe when was it's the confirmed. last time one of those big rumors was actually right? Um, well, actually, <laughs> I feel like it's been a while. Well, there, I think a lot of these get mixed up sometimes. Like there's just too much thrown out there that you can't tell who what came from who. Like the Smash rumor, like we all the Grinch leaks that we oh. covered. Like all that was wrong. But like before that, people <laughs> talk about Incineroar and Ken. Like right. that was out there, and yeah. so I was like, "No, no, no! It's just, it's just this." And people were like, "Nah, that's too simple. It can't be that." And it was in Ken. Yeah, we were like yeah. the last ones announced, and I was like, "Okay, I guess you were right and stuff." But um, there have definitely been things that have been completely right. There have been things that have been really wrong, and it's just just the nature of it. Just for for every right one you get, there's going to be plenty of that are yeah. wrong. So no, don't, Gino. Yeah, I wouldn't use that as good investment advice. But there were some <laughs> announcements. There were some good announcements at the yeah. Game Awards, and I want to start with. Uh, what I thought was the first big one, the uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance yeah, 3 oh. coming exclusively to Switch in Which 2019. blows my mind. That, uh, yeah, I saw that Marvel logo roll. I was like, oh, what are we getting? Because it showed Switch first. It Switch, then Marvel. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. here we go. And uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, this is, a, this is a series that was going on for a while, but it's been absent for about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, previously, it was published by Activision. I remember, yeah. Um, it was a multi-platform yeah, series. It was on like, everything, right? It was like, like on Xbox everything. Xbox and like, PS2. Yeah, it, but uh, it was uh, Raven Software, the original console versions. Oh. And then it got ported to Wii and other systems after, like a few years, a little bit after. And then the sequel, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2, was uh, Vicarious Visions. And then a company called Endspace used to do all the DS and like Wii ports for a lot of stuff. Handled uh, a lot of the other versions for it. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty big series and stuff. And then just kind of like vanished. And now it is back nearly 10 years yeah. later. And uh, it is being developed so I just gave you who developed it and published it. It's being developed by Team Ninja this time. Yeah. And published directly by Nintendo. So no Activision in the That's equation That's so here. weird. Team Ninja? Yeah, Team Ninja. How do you feel about that? Team Ninja making it's this. Cra- the, that's crazy. And that it's exclusive to me is nuts. Yeah. It's Nintendo, so good. Nintendo had to probably throw a lot of money at yeah, this to yeah. get that exclusivity. Smart play, probably. I'm really excited about this. When was the last time they did something with Teen Ninja? Was it Other M? Other M. Um, they also have done. Uh, I forgot they did Other M. <laughs> yeah, what was the other one they did? I mean, they have they a did good. Neo, they, though, too. they have a great yeah. working relationship with a uh, uh, Koei Tecmo okay. for uh, the the Muso games. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. It's like Fire Emblem and stuff like that. Yeah, Fire Emblem and then uh, Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, they they, like definitely a good working relationship there with them. Okay. So I imagine the process went. Nintendo got the exclusivity. Hmm. This is you know the style of game. Who would be best suited to it? Oh. Yeah. Koei Tecmo is Team Ninja available? Yeah, let's work with them. We like them. You know, good good working relationship. 
Um, how did you think it looked uh, <laughs> visually? I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, that's really a Switch game. <laughs> yeah. When I saw it. <laughs> yeah. It looks, yeah, it looks like, I don't know, Pokemon Let's Go. <laughs> like, you Dude. know, it looks like the Switch could run it well. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I've seen some comments online. Mm -hmm. Definitely echoed that. It looks like a Switch game. Um, I've seen some comparisons to uh, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. About oh, the really? visual style being a little bit similar in the similar like the vein. Design? And also that's why it seems a little off-putting to some people. Hmm. Because of that. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I have to take a closer look at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I only saw the trailer when we were watching the live. Yeah, like I rewatched it. Awards. It didn't look as bad as my initial reaction was. Probably because we're watching it on a stream and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know the quality of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's on Switch. It's an exclusive. Well, and I mean, it it definitely didn't look amazing. But to me, the Marvel Alliance games aren't about that. It's about getting a whole bunch of people on the screen and just like being Wolverine or yeah. whoever or Psylocke or whoever you want and like fighting bad guys. And especially if you can do it with four player co-op, it's going to be so cool. And that was a, yeah, the four player co-op playing on your switch is that that's going to be awesome. Uh, they showed a little bit of the roster as yeah. well. We saw members of the guardians of the galaxy, saw some Avengers. We saw Wolverine. Yep. And, and you know, like 10 years ago, that wouldn't have been a big deal because they all, you know, they're all part of the Marvel universe. But nowadays, in the wake of, you know, the Fox properties supposedly going to Disney, you yeah. know, it's like the deal's gone through, just going to like wait for it to be legally approved. Escrow or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, but <laughs> the X-Men have been separated from the Marvel Universe because of that. And this thing of having Avengers and, and an X-Men together finally after so long is like a big deal. Mm -hmm. so is seeing, this, this is like the first thing that we've seen of that. I'm right? not sure it's the first ever thing. Well, not ever, but like it's, since the Fox Marvel. It's pretty high profile. Yeah. I would give it that. Yeah. And I think it got a little bit of an extra like oomph of cheers. They from sort that. of did it sure. in Deadpool. Kind of. Deadpool had the. I'm not the sure who owns Deadpool. It's confusing. Well, Deadpool was uh, Fox as well. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they used the Fox some action right. shot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. There's some concern about what happened to Deadpool, you know, going over there. Mm. You know, no, no more R rated perhaps. We got some. Uh, we got some questions about Marvel Ultimate Alliance okay. from our patrons. Uh, Kerbu, who in their right mind could have ever predicted Nintendo publishing a Team Ninja developed Ultimate Alliance sequel? How in the world did a deal like this come together? And do you think it's a sign for weirder, more unexpected things to come out of Nintendo? I would not have seen that coming. I yeah. thought Marvel Ultimate Alliance was dead because yeah. it's been forever. Uh, the Team Ninja collaboration is not surprising me because they've done in the past. Uh, what was the other part of the question? What else um, could we see happening? Yeah, what other like strange, unexpected what other things, strange do things do you think are possible see? now? I'm ho secretly hoping for a new Zack and Wiki. So I'm secretly hoping for. Capcom. But I don't know about that. You know they could just bring out the original one remastered. I know, man. Just do it. Give it another chance. Do it. It's great. They had so much buzz and stuff, and people just never jumped on board with that game. Mm. Oh, man. Didn't they? They had... They had like Ninja Gaiden three Razor and on or whatever. Wii U? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, <do> that. <laughs> they gave that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you get Ninja Gaiden on Switch. Yeah, what if they just like re rebooted Ninja Gaiden as a Switch exclusive or something? Whoa. Nintendo, yeah. If Nintendo was offering to fund it and stuff, make it happen. I, I mean, don't know, like Bayonetta. 3. Yeah, what happened with Bayonetta? Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it'd just be a, a, a sitting around dormant yeah. franchise. Yeah. Better, not better that than nothing. Yeah. Soul Reaver. I'm calling Soul it. Soul Reaver. Ooh. I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh, legacy of Kane. That'd be there. sick. Talking with Square. Who is that? Square. That's Square Enix. Yeah. 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 But it was only ever PlayStation, right? Soul Reaver. Uh, I, I don't remember. PC. Maybe PC. Maybe PC. Yeah. But that's something that's definitely a door that could be open. Yeah. That's a absolutely that's something that I could see. Square. I just want to see. I mean, I think we'll talk about it. But Persona Five on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want them to make uh, remakes, re-releases of. Parasite Eve mm, and Dino yes, Crisis Parasite and all those Eve other ones. Ooh. I know they're different companies, but yeah. And I want those all to come to the Switch. <laughs> yes. Also. The great PlayStation revival happening on the Switch. <laughs> on the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> Coming now to the Switch. Hmm. Doing what PlayStation Classic didn't. No, I'm kidding. Uh, the, that's the thing I like, though, about this and Smash and all this stuff is like, it really does feel like weird, wild things are possible and, and are happening. 
that I, I wouldn't like have expected. Uh, I really like that feeling. I wonder yeah. if and believing that, yeah. I wonder if they could do like a Castlevania on Switch. Oh, since Brad. the Belmonts are in it now. Oh, Brad. Like the possibility is kind of there. It seems like. Yeah, it doesn't have to be Symphony of the Night, but it could just be like a new two D one or something I'm snacking like that. On that. You know, just starting small or something. I don't think it'll be a huge three D one right off the bat. I would love another just straight up pixel good, art. Yeah, good Yacht Club Games to make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Oh, dude. Can yes. you imagine if they made like an Aria of Sorrow? Castlevania Symphony of the Night kind yes. of game for the Switch. It'd be oh, awesome. Baby. Oh, yeah. I'm down for this. I like these ideas. The Some thing that stuff. blows my mind about this is it's it's called Ultimate Alliance 3, right? Mm-hmm. That's nuts. Like, they didn't just call it like a reboot. Marvel Ultimate Alliance or yeah. Marvel whatever. Yeah, it you know, it's, a it's continuation. three. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is actually just a sequel with a mm-hmm. number in it, and it's just on the Switch, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Yeah. I, um, I'm excited to see what it has in store for us. Uh, this next question, I, I like it because uh, I covered part of this on uh, an episode of Pop Fiction. Ooh, Tanner, wow. hey allies, back in 2006, the first Marvel Ultimate Alliance was a launch title for the Nintendo Wii, likely writing some of the massive sales numbers of the console itself. Later, we found out that Link and Samus were programmed as playable characters for the Wii version and pitched to Nintendo, who rejected the pitch. Oh. <laughs> so they, they used it without their permission. Yeah, yeah. Oh. saw it, and they're like, yeah, we, that, we're yeah, not cool I, I that. think I see where this question's going. You can probably guess my question. <laughs> <laughs> what is the likelihood of playable Nintendo characters in Ultimate Alliance 3, and who would you personally like to see? I would see something more slim. Sorry. I would see something more likely what they did with Diablo, like having a certain set or something like that. Yeah, like, like a skin. Like the Ganondorf set. Yeah, I could see something like that more so. Yeah. Like Samus outfit or something mm-hmm. for a character. I don't know about like playing actually as Link or Samus though. Or like I could see like on a Guardians of the Galaxy stage, you have to like fight a mother brain or something, like a Metroid oh, yeah, or something, cool. like that'd enemies. Cool yeah. Like, yeah, like one of the power from enemies. Uh, they actually, part of the sentence I cut off, the one of their suggestions is one I would like to see Captain Falcon oh. from F Zero. Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of fits into like the hero, yeah. the, the, the iconic hero uh, kind of template there. Mm-hmm. Also, Kirby. Because there seems to be this weird obsession after the World of Light trailer came out and uh, Kirby survived, then people wanted then to know like how powerful, <laughs> like how powerful is Kirby really? And then people like Kirby could take on Thanos by himself. <laughs> like, here, like here we go. So play into that like joke there. Yeah, you know, people are just memeing that. I would Kirby, love it. Kirby just Kirby just eats universe. Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bloop. Burp. Shoots Spits out. out the glove. That'd be funny. Yeah. I think what Brad said is probably most likely, or I, I would see enemies, but maybe not playing as it'd be cool. It depends on how canon they are considering it to be, you know, mm-hmm. like I imagine it's, it would, if anything, be ultimate Alliance canon, not present cinematic universe canon, obviously, but like, yeah, I don't know. It depends on how precious both sides of the coin are being. Cause I know Marvel is a mm-hmm. little, cause Marvel, uh, right. They like, didn't like Marvel versus Capcom anymore or whatever. Didn't they? Wasn't so, that them oh, kind of yeah. putting the kibosh yeah, on? Yeah, th- that's what people suspect. That's what they suspect, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, out between them. if they're being that precious with that, a kind of established thing, like, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if maybe that was part of the pitch Nintendo did to them, is that, hey, you know, we'll do what you want, but also, we have these really cool characters, if you'd like... If, they can we can work them in in whatever fashion you think makes sense. Maybe it's just like a bonus for being a game. Hey, now you can go through and play as like some. And it Nintendo is exclusive. Characters. The fact yeah. that it's ex- exclusive I, maybe leans toward yes. I mean, if not that, I think like cosmetic stuff like outfits, yeah, yeah, something yeah, like sure. that could definitely be mm-hmm. thrown they in there. They seem more likely to play ball yeah. now than kind of ever. It seems yeah. like with their IPs. Yeah, I think I think I have to believe Marvel sees the value proposition of having merging Nintendo IP stuff. At yeah. some level, with yeah. their their Marvel stuff, to appeal to gamers, essentially. Mm-hmm. I could see Samus in there, then, yeah. Yeah. Link and Zelda are tough because it's like they're so embroiled in a whole other timeline. <laughs> it's like eh. it's a little too fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. yeah. For, I think or the the sci fi vibe they go for. Bayonetta could knows? show up. Maybe they can reimagine. They got them. Fox in there. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Can I'm trying to Star think. Hawks. Are there any Nintendo like mutants? Mutants? Like any any Nintendo well, any mean, classic Nintendo character could they be considered a mutant? Kirby kind of maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a like a like, X Men mutant? Yeah, like a person yeah. with like powers or like an Avenger style. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I wonder. Not from their main core like Donkey Kong, mm. Mario, Zelda. Donkey Kong's sort of Star beast Fox. vibes. Doesn't speak English. Yeah. Really, kind of. I think like. I'm thinking 
Pokemon, no. I was thinking of like, a, like Mewtwo's creation and right. stuff. But Giovanni yeah. was like a science experiment, but I don't want to call that like a mutant per se. I could see Pokemon showing up, maybe. Yeah, they would love that. I bet Marvel would love Oh my god, yeah. Mm-hmm. They would love Pokemon that. access. <laughs> um, on the flip side... Um, Mewtwo and Jean Grey facing off. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Come on. Psychic fight. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you caught a Jean Grey. <laughs> <laughs> It was very effective. Uh, ben wants to know: Does Marvel Ultimate Alliance three being Switch ex- exclusive make it more likely we could see Wolverine in Smash? Yes. yes. On the other way. Yes. Yes. In fact, yes. I had not thought of that. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Simple answers, good. Because mm-hmm. we're going to dive into that in just a second. That would be about so possibilities. Awesome. I just wanted to throw it out there. I like Brad's idea. We'll get into it. But Brad had probably the greatest character idea ever. Oh yeah, we'll get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cannot wait to hear that. But uh, I'm guessing this might have been Brad's uh, stand-up and clap moment you were referring to earlier from the Game Awards. Oh, yeah. yeah. Next, probably the, probably the biggest announcement of the night. Uh, Joker from Persona 5 <sighs> joining Super Smash Bros. Ultimate uh, as well, part they, of the first fighter pack. They did it with such a flair, right? Because it like interrupted the, the clothes or whatever it was he was doing. It was almost like Cyberpunk's... Uh, was, everyone thought it was yeah, Cyberpunk, yeah, yeah, and then it's like, red... And then we see like Joker, and they're talking about the Switch, and we're like, "Wait, is Persona Five coming to the Switch?" And we we're all like, "Ah!" It and then was... and then you see the Smash logo, and we're like, "Wait, what?" You see, yeah, like the, because they're Blew talking about like mind. doing a calling card, like, but this time we're the ones getting the card and stuff, yeah, the yeah, invitation. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, you see that seal stamp and ooh, you, baby, yeah, hell yeah. It was fun watching reactions uh, online from other outlets to that uh, and other YouTubers because a lot of other people were like, "What?" There were people. <laughs> It seemed like there's pe- there are people either super stoked at the beginning thinking it was Persona Five coming to Switch, yeah, but also some people really upset. They're like, really, that's it? Persona Five is coming to Switch? That's your big finale? Yeah. And then like the dramatic shift at the invitation part to people being jubilant. Oh yes, Joker's in Smash too. No, where's wait? Is Persona yeah, Five yeah, yeah, coming yeah. to Switch? Yeah. No. Uh, we, we take it as good evidence that it may come to Switch. Yeah. And there are rumors. Uh, like last day and uh, day or so, rumors have come out. People saying that yeah, Persona Five is coming to Switch under one of two names. Forget what they were. Um, not cr- not Crimson. Golden. Not Crimson uh, was not one of them. And, I hope uh, it's like new content though. We'll see. You know, uh, like the- Ben or somebody was saying that they hope they do the um, Persona Three thing where you oh, can the, play as a oh, woman. Oh, the portable. Thing. Yeah, there's. Yeah. Yeah, Persona Three Portal let you play as a female protagonist yeah. as yeah, well. It has like some different and then situations, there was, right? And if then they there do that. FES. I am all in. FES, yeah, the FES <laughs> didn't have that console though. version. Yeah, that just let you like walk around uh, yeah. more and a uh, different opening. And uh, what was the other thing? Uh, oh, I don't want to get a correction for that. But uh, <laughs> I only played Persona Three Portable. Oh, I played FES. I, I, I played through the entirety of Portable, and I love that game. Have you played really four? Good. Um, I played a lot of four. Yeah, I never beat four, but I, I really I, liked I beat it. four, and I played a majority of, of it, but I like skipped over because I was doing it for an episode of Pop Fiction. Uh, so okay. I didn't have time to play through the entire gotcha. game. So sure, sure. played about like thirty hours of it. Okay, which is a good amount, but I got not even halfway. Through. I got really into it, and then I hit a brick wall, Oof. and I had like no money or items, and I was like, "What am I supposed to do?" Oof. I do feel like three, especially three, three felt a little bit harder than five in terms of challenge. I will three? say that. Yeah, oh, three? Dude, oh, yeah. I think just going through um, Tartarus itself. Yeah, isn't three yeah. one of the harder ones? Yeah. Anyway, whatever. We could talk about Persona for a long time. Joker's before. dope. And yeah, it's great character cool. to add. Super cool. So we got some questions about this now. All right. Like, what does this mean? What's going to happen in the future? Like, people are excited. This is like what Ian was talking about. Like, almost any crazy thing can happen on Switch. Now, any crazy thing can happen in Smash Brothers. Yeah. And Benjamin first asked, do you think Smash DLC characters will all be tied in with yet-to-be-announced games for the Switch? Like Persona 5. Or could there be a chance of seeing representation from games already on the system, such as could Solaire roll into yeah. battle? He already has yep. an amiibo. Yep. That was Brad's yeah, that's like, suggestion. It yeah. seems really obvious it to me. It seems very clear that Solaire will roll in. Like that'd be a sick character to add, man. And, like the Dark Souls level would like be like the undead bird oh, or the something. Dark, oh my god, It'd be awesome. And the music, and the dude. Music. Can you imagine mm-hmm. Smashified Dark Souls music? Yeah. Oh, do yeah. it. I would buy the fighter pack. And I don't even love Smash. But you will. Oh, I'll buy the hell out of it. Um, yeah. I think I think that they'll all be non-Nintendo. Sure. Like, um, they'll all be third party. Yeah, I yep. think they'll all be surprises. 
Oh yeah, I was saying to the guys the other day that I'm really proud of Nintendo that they learned their lesson that they didn't put data of these characters in the game already so that it could get data mined and spoiled. Because, like, that moment was so beautiful that none of us saw Joker mm-hmm. coming, and it just happened, and no one data mined it. And I was like, good job, Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Don't put your hidden characters in the game before they're in the yeah. game. They did the same thing with uh, Cloud before. Yeah. No yeah. one knew Cloud was coming yeah. at all. Yeah. But, and like, Ryu and a bunch of other got, like, leaked, right? So, like Ryu back got in the day? leaked because they did the update too early and hackers were able to get access to it. Like, they basically right. did the announcement after the update. Right, okay. And people were, like, streaming it already. Like, hackers were streaming Ryu playing in Smash Ugh. and stuff. Because Ouch. Brutal. Yeah, now yeah, that, that I don't think they don't do that anymore. At least they do the announcement before the, well the before. update hits and stuff. Yeah, because so. do we know when this is coming out? It's like... No, we still don't have the date it's yet. It's, like, next year. We know yeah, five sure, of them are year. coming out between now and uh Q- february of next year oh yeah he oh, fe- said sorry february of 2020. 2020 we're not in 2019 i remember <laughs> he said he said they may take up to a year or more to come in please be patient i remember oh that. Yeah. yeah piranha plant doesn't count right it is one of them uh no it's not one of the five okay it's you get part of the for cool. pre-ordering or yeah playing yeah in the first i just don't know if they count yeah, yeah. and then it'll, it'll be available after for cool. uh for purchase cool cool, cool cool um yeah but uh i i agree with you ian i think I think at this point I get the vibe that none of them will be first party. Yeah. Or if they are, it will be an unreleased. I can see it either being from a an un, only being from an unreleased uh, first party title, such as Fire Emblem Three Houses or sure. Pokemon Twenty Nineteen. Mm-hmm. I could see yeah, one yeah, Pokemon yeah, yeah. for sure. But I definitely think third party stuff is more likely now, well, and, and we, stuff we weren't considering before. And we know that Sakurai didn't do these well that they're like chosen by nintendo right yeah More that, that whole that whole sequence um i would say at this point don't read too much into it because there were some disputes over the translations of it oh, okay i believe someone from i was either sakurai's wife stepped in and said please like like something about like i think said something to the extent that the english media is like reading too much into this statement mm-hmm. um and clearly this announcement shows that even if it is was all true Nintendo's clearly pushing like excitement and hype Good, yeah. over yeah, yeah. you know self promotion, right. which I think is a really wise decision. Mm-hmm. I could see, and I don't think anything's off limits. I also think there's no there's no problem with like going back to a familiar company they're already working like Capcom. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Resident Evil representation in here, and oh. Resident Evil is tied to Nintendo stuff yeah. pretty well. Yeah, I, I could see like a, a, a Chris or Jill or Leon being added into the game. Because uh, Resident, Evil, if, Resident Evil 4 debuted on uh, on GameCube first, so you can yeah, right. Leon be the iconic person. Uh, you know, maybe there's some upcoming thing happening between Resident Evil and Switch that we don't know about, and it'll yeah, be Resident part of Evil that. Two remake. They put seven. No, on, they put seven on Switch. On Switch right? so. Yeah, sort of. Right? It was like um, through the streaming stream. service, yeah. and I think it's Japan only, only right? Japan, yeah. yeah, Japan only. But who knows what the future uh, do? Maybe they'll put like a Monster Hunter character in or something. That People are thinking be, Monster Hunter yeah. characters. But would it be a Hunter or or like Rathalos? I mean, Rathalos is in the you, game. Rathalos is a boss. Oh, yeah, in the he's game a boss. That's yeah. right. I yeah. forgot about that. They could easily put a hunter in. Um, Dude, oh my God. What do you got? What if this is pie in the sky? Ooh. So, what if they have such a deal with Capcom? And I mean, like, obviously, Capcom and, and Nintendo have a good relationship, I think. But, like, what if they do a thing where it's instead, because we don't have me fighters anymore, you can't bring your own me in. Mm-hmm. What well, if. Actually, well, wait, wait, wait. Well, whatever. But, like, let's say there you can bring... There. Well, there are me fighters, but they're not, like... You don't make Miis anymore. Yeah, you can, actually. You can? I was... So, I was capturing last night for like, diving into that. They have the old... It looks like it's actually the literally the Wii menu, not even, like, up res. You can anything. still design a Wii There's for the Wii fighter? When you're bringing... Like, so, I was doing the Amiibo thing to bring in an Amiibo. And it has to be signed to a me. And it already had pre-existing me stuff I could choose from. But I actually had to create a me, and you go in and make a... like. A, from scratch, make a brand new me. Wow. Uh, okay. For well, Smash Brothers only. I was crazy. like, what? The system's still there. It still exists. I was okay, like, Whoa. well, I didn't know that. But like, let's say yeah. they have a system with Capcom and Monster Hunter where you link your account and your actual player character, Monster Hunter, from Monster oh. Hunter, goes into Smash Ultimate. So that, is pie in the sky. That, that is pie, pie in, the sky. in the sky. There you go, Ian. Your literal actual character with all the costumes and the weapon. They have all the weapon styles. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? That would be insanity. Just even all the weapon styles would be yeah. nuts, but yeah, it's, hey, <laughs> it's possible with it's your possible. like status effects. Possible, my poison yeah. insect glaive. 
Uh, I they someone said recently, I believe that they heard they hear fans about Chrono Trigger. And, yeah, and, and, right, uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, right. I want it so bad, but I don't believe it. I'm not getting baited again. I want Chrono or Frog or Ro- I want anyone from Chrono Trigger in here. So if they if they just put the port a port of Chrono Trigger on Switch, just like on the eShop, yeah, like the the enhanced one, but it right. looks good and everything. And as part of that, they say next Fighter Pack three coming Stop out this it. summer. Stop it! Is the Chrono Pack? Chrono Stop it! In there? Nope. And you get a level. Don't hype you get me that up, Chrono man. Chrono Trigger Don't, remix no, music. How dare you say <laughs> this to me right now, Dalmani? Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, oh, like Ramza. I mean, good, yeah. yeah, Final Fantasy Seven remake stuff. Because they have Cloud in there. Yeah, oh. they could put Sephiroth. <laughs> could they really put Sephiroth in? His blade is so long. <laughs> it's the entire level. <laughs> hey, they can put Ridley in there and scale Ridley down. That's true. You're right. Make a, uh, yeah, you're, that's right. Um, Dante. Devil May Cry. Yeah, even though it's not coming to Switch. Yeah, they but... could maybe put the collection on Switch. Mm-hmm. The HD collection. I put like Dante in there. Yeah, there's a whole. There's a lot of characters. If they get there. Kingdom Hearts shit in there, I mean, that's it'll like blow the one my I've been mind. Re- that's We've been talking G- about that. But forever. that's in January, and they ran and ready announced Persona, so it'd have to be. And there's no Kingdom Hearts. Oh, coming I don't out. think it would be yeah. till like the end. Yeah, it, we'd have to, like basically. I think there has to be some hook uh, to Mickey. It. It's King Mickey. <laughs> but then again, it doesn't have to because the ultimate crossover. What if Persona Five never comes to Switch? I know yeah. Joker's technically in uh, the 3DS mm-hmm. uh, Labyrinth game, uh, the sequel one. Like oh the, Q, yeah Q oh, two, yeah, yeah it it's like Q two well, or yeah. something. It's not Q one. He's not in that. Does, does that like in like Cloud was technically in Chain of Memories on Game Boy Advance? Yeah. So did you like is that and like do we really need to like go like that six degrees think, of Kevin Bacon? I don't think we need to, to now. get to. I don't think the, we do. Like I don't think we need this weird Nintendo logic. It has to be representative of Nintendo. No, no. I think we're beyond that. Yeah. Now. They can do yeah, whatever yeah. they want. This is like like I wouldn't the be surprised. Industry fighting game. I wouldn't be surprised if like Cuphead showed up. Oh, that would be. We were talking about like the Microsoft yeah. stuff. Like, like there's no Microsoft. Banjo like, or, or Steve. They or, were all on stage together. Please the game not Awards. Steve. Anything is possible. Yeah, Steve. I don't want. Please not Steve. You know what I really want is Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Roger, Roger Rabbit. Rabbit. Okay. <laughs> and he summons it? Bob Hoskins the as stage, a as yeah, a like the, as a the stage is like a like live action stage has like Reggie walking mm-hmm. across <laughs> and like you know yeah, it's literal video. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that'd be so good. Oh, let's. Toy, we got, Toy Story Buzz Lightyear. We'll s- we could do this all day. Yeah. Sorry. Anti Benz. So Joker is a wild card pick, but I think the five degrees of separation is closer than people think. So here we go. Yeah. Persona is a spinoff of Shin Megami Tensei, a series that has primarily been on Nintendo consoles, even having a game on Virtual Boy. Sega also owns Atlas now, and they have a great low cream. Wait, there's a sh- oh, there was a Shin Megami Tensei game. It was like a weird like. Side, you play Jack Frost, I think, in it. I don't even remember this. Okay, you know On more the than Virtual me, Brad. Boy? Yeah, I think so. Like a billion years ago. Was it ago? JP only, or did it actually? I, come I out think here? it's JP only. Oh, huh. I think. That said, Nintendo has a few trusted partners they can work with for the remaining DLC packs. Um, so, realistically, what companies do you expect? Square. Like, yeah, more Square, Square. Sega, Sega. What if they put Ryu in it, or Rio? Oh, from, from uh, Shenmue. Oh, Shenmue. Shen- oh, Shenmue. That'd be yeah. crazy. Like, Huber, Huber would, weep would like, again. cry. Like, then, he could be Ryo and Bowser in a game. <laughs> How crazy would that be? I wonder if Miriam from Bloodstained, if they would reach out to... Oh, that's a good pick, Ian. I wonder how many... Uh, what other uh, Bandai Namco series? Bandai Namco. Because uh, they, co- they help develop uh, Smash Brothers yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I mean, Goku. They have Dark Souls with Bandai Namco. Go- 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 Goku. Yeah. Don't yeah. they do the fighter games? I thought they yeah, did. They do. I yeah. thought Bandai Namco put out fighters. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think they. Do get they the do the? Do they do the? Do they do the jump games too? Um, uh, Shonen, yeah. like Jump Force. Uh, yes. Um, and they also do the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Story games. All right, dude. So. Uh, Goku confirmed now. One Piece games. Uh, yeah. Luffy. Yeah. You know what? You know what franchise a bunch of other fighting games have actually sunk their teeth into? Star Wars. Star Wars. Like yeah. He's, yeah, there, they've shown up in Soul Calibur. They've shown yeah, up. Yeah, is in, Disney gonna work with Nintendo here? I. I mean, if Sora's in it, it's like the Marvel. missing big one. They got Konami. They got you know, like if they got Disney somehow, that would be mm-hmm. weird and cool. Kylo Ren, dude. Ray, dude. Yes. <laughs> We're riding on a high right I'd now. Pop Smash high here. 
But da- Chrono Trigger. Daniel wants to bring us down a little bit. Oh, Daniel, they come got on. A, Wait, they, I bet they just put a McLaren in there. Yeah, they'll put a McLaren just in there. Just a straight up car. Yeah. And you just drive, can't jump. Mm-hmm. And Bumblebee will be in there. Yeah, yeah and Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Yeah. And Hell, Michael Bay himself. Yeah. Michael Bay with uh, Jerry Bruckheimer yeah. and Hans Zimmer will be composing <laughs> Gary <laughs> Mason Williams <laughs> in the soundtrack stage. Yeah. Hans uh, with lots of up. explosions. Hans Zimmer, Hans Zimmer, he can come, but the catch is he can only be on any stage for like 30 seconds. <laughs> so he just shows up, plays guitar, and then you never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> He's an assist trophy. Yeah. Daniel says, Ultimate has been my first Smash game ever, and I'm absolutely blown away by how much I enjoy the game. The announcement of Joker being the first new character to join the already huge roster has me pretty excited, but there's a problem. Oh, Here's their problem. I am not a fighting game pro or aficionado, and just enjoying the game on a casual level. I'm also only playing online against others, and so far it's a lot of fun because there are many players who are like me, are not good, but enjoy their time with, with the game. However... We know that the first character is at least a month away, not to mention the other new characters that will follow, and I fear that by the time they are out, the player base will become more and more Smash Brothers core players than casual players. Do you think the game will still be fun to play for casual people online by the time the first DLC character comes out, as well as by the time the final character hits the roster? Thanks as always for the great content you and the other allies produce. Love and respect. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's. I think they're right. Like online is probably going to be tough for newbies, but I think it's like any anything where any online game. Yeah, where like any new release will bring an uptick of of the more casual user base back to play the new thing, and then it'll wean out again. You know, yeah. and it'll it'll ebb and flow like that every time. To me, Smash Brothers is a local like couch co op game first and foremost. So, and from what I hear from Ben, the online isn't rock solid by any means oh yeah yeah uh <laughs> is there like matchmaking and stuff so okay like rankings and stuff yeah like i mean there there is there is a preferences thing you can do um when you go into quick play and try and use it more often than not it straight up ignores oh, what okay. you said it the system favors getting you to a match faster than making you wait for preferences i see which is drawing a lot of ire mm-hmm. the interesting there is a wait in the background option which will always give you what you want, uh, mm-hmm. and you can do other things. And I found myself not waiting more than like sixty seconds. For okay, that. right now. But yeah. it's so weird that if you do it through quick play, it'll instantly find you a match, but it's almost never what you asked for. Strange. So, and there is no way currently to do. Uh, there's like no just straight up one v one lobby or anything like that. It's it, that's kind of like frustrating. Really? Yeah. If you go into quick play, you're honestly going to get four player matches almost all the wow, time. Wow, really? I thought there was a one by one by there, one. You can set it in your preference, but that's gone. There used to be there used to be four glory and four fun, and in four glory there was a one v one like like straight up hardcore mode essentially. Uh, Even oh, in the quote unquote like ranked hard like like pro style matches, you could still get four single player four people against each other in a free for all. Uh. It doesn't always guarantee you're getting a one v one. So there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of backlash against the But in the, the preferences, match you can set preferences. I'm you can set, for one You can set like how many stock you want, oh, okay, time okay, limit, okay. and stuff. But if you go through the if you if you stay online and wait in the queue through quick play, you're more likely not going to get the more complex you get, the less chance you're going to get into that type of match. It's probably just going to throw you into a, a free for all four player match. If you do matchmaking in the background, and you go do other stuff. It, um, in your little like right bar menu, there's like a progress uh, meter with like the the icon of your character you picked. So like I picked Samus for most of them, so it was like a Samus helmet, and this is this little green bar that fills up, and it just like says, "Oh, match found." Now taking you to the match, and just goes right in. Like I was literally starting a match of uh, Richter versus Simon uh, in this normal Smash, and they were dropping in, interrupted me, brought me into the match. Uh, it was actually the one Wi-Fi match I did that actually had a decent connection very good connection uh almost no latency i was surprised the only time it ever happened <laughs> um so it was like one of the best wi-fi matches i had you and were it, on wi-fi or yeah i was on yeah. wi-fi so i was trying out both to see how it is yeah. v- basically wi-fi is almost virtually unplayable yeah oh. <laughs> and through wired uh you can get pretty good matches but more often than not it's because it's dependent on other people's connection um you will get up to like the best i can say is maybe a half to a quarter second of like input delay 
Good it feels Lord. like, mm-hmm. and so you, it just That's feels bad. sluggish. That's bad. Yeah, for a fighting game. And for a fighting game, it's really bad. It's it's still playable, and like if you just take it as like chaotic fun, like when we were doing last yeah. group stream, it's just fun, like just goofing around and seeing yeah. what can happen. But if you're trying to play seriously, it's probably not the place for you. I yeah. see. Um, but to answer the question, I think people will swing up. Yeah, whenever when, there's a new when, character. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Um, yeah, the question, I think, of all the online games, first-party online-focused Nintendo games, Splatoon and Smash Brothers will be the ones that carry the longest. I know Splatoon's on its, like, end game right now. It's going to be closing shop next year like, in terms of, like, no more updates. Yeah. I think the online... It'll still go. Still but have yeah, online, yeah. but no more content updates. They're, they're going to do a Splatoon 3. It's, oh, like, of course. And it'll be huge. Of and it'll course. be supported E3, for a long baby. time. They yeah. do support all their online games. Like, Mario Tennis still gets content updates. Even Mario Kart 8. But I think in terms of player base is what they really care about. I think this will have the largest active player base of any of the games for yeah. the longest time. Yeah, yeah, sure. And those new character dr- drops are going to see a spike. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. People jumping back in for sure. Um, rest of the announcements from the Game Awards. There were no Metroid announcements. Right. Those have been rumored stuff. They didn't happen. We think um, there's, that'll come in a January direct. Yeah, we got to get a direct at some point because only New Super Mario Brothers U has a confirmed date in January. Every other game that's been announced for 2019 has either no date oh. or we don't know about. Like even Yoshi doesn't have. I was about to ask you about Yoshi. <laughs> yeah. I've been working on Yoshi for a long yeah. time. I mean, like. okay, this is the year probably. But we did get some other uh, games that are coming to Switch, uh, not exclusives. Well, one's ex- well, no, none of these are exclusive. Oh. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 got a big announcement. Oh wait, that's coming to Switch. Multiplayer platform. Announced with Switch logo on there. Whoa, so whoa, I didn't know that. Crazy. Day and date, big title coming wow. there. So that's like a that's big, big. That's a big deal. It's also going to help them with sales. Like a lot of these yeah. fighting games oh, yeah. are going to benefit from being on Switch day and date. Uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Nitro yeah. Field, a remaster of uh, a remake Crash of Racing. Crash Team Racing yeah. of PlayStation. I'm pretty excited about that one. Uh, curious if uh, Nitrous Oxide will be intentionally playable from. Uh, the get go instead of a, a thing you had to use a cheat code to get. Yeah. Uh, the the other big one. Well, I it opened the show, so that's why I call it big. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Oh yeah. Uh, music rhythm st- uh, style action game that it's described as a euphoric music video dream about being awesome, riding motorcycles, skateboarding, dance battling, shooting lasers, wielding swords, and breaking hearts at two hundred miles per hour. Oh my! I from, forgot about that one, but it looks so cool. From Studio Amigo, yeah, looked pretty cool. Uh, probably will definitely check it that out. It looks so cool. It looked cool. <laughs> it cool. Um, yeah, that that kind of like wrapped up the, mm-hmm. the the announcements there. Um, I do have a question regarding the third party stuff here. Uh, from John, do you feel like Nintendo is starting a turn? Uh, sorry. Do you feel like Nintendo is starting to turn a corner with third-party releases? Ultimate Lines Three is such a great get for the system, and Joker will steal the headlines. But perhaps overlooked is the fact that Crash Team Racing and Mortal Kombat 11, of all things, were unceremoniously announced for Switch alongside PS4 and Xbox. Yeah. It seems devs are realizing this isn't a flash in the pan, and maybe it's not as expensive to develop for after all. Should we expect this trend to continue, or have we just had a rush of friendly devs? I Love think it'll continue for a while. Yeah. At least until the next generation of consoles comes out, and if they can actually transfer it down that much, right? That's a good point, Brad. Right, because yeah, once once people are making stuff for the PS5, yeah, yeah, and like Persona, there's already a PS3 version of that game, so they should be able to do it easily. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Persona Five. Yeah, yeah. I I think for games where so, Unreal as long as they're on Unreal Four and. The Unreal team, they, they are trying to push uh, Unreal 4 engine to scale to Switch. They keep posting yeah. updates. It is getting better. They, they've seen how successful Switch is. They're working with Nintendo and other publishers to get it you know, into a better place. Mm-hmm. So that's easier to port these games. I think as long as those games run on that engine... Um, it will be within the realm of possibility, but there will always be some games, I think, where they don't want the performance hit to... If it's going to be that significant, they just don't want it to happen. Right. Example mm-hmm. is Resident Evil 2 Remake and Devil May Cry 5. Right. They are not coming to Switch. So, yeah. I don't think either of the games in their, in a traditional format will come there. They might do the cloud version in Japan again because right. it's Capcom. They might right. try that out. Yeah. Maybe not with Devil May Cry, but for Resident Evil 2 Remake. Yeah. Like, I don't see Kingdom Hearts 3 probably coming to Switch, sadly. No, I don't think so. And... They're just going to be those higher-end titles, but for a lot of these other 
titles that are still triple A but aren't necessarily pushing the boundaries of like the the visual fidelity and technology. I definitely see mm-hmm. it to their benefit, and especially oh, like yeah. fighting games. Like, there's no reason any fighting game should skip Except switch for the network connectivity apparently yeah well that's a whole yeah. other story the weird the weird thing with that though is like i think about i think about the games you just said and then i think about doom and and wolfenstein and, and it's sold. like they're on switch and they work okay you uh-huh. know they scaled them down like it works yeah and I, doom is a good looking game it is and it's a damn fine technical accomplishment like id or wizards and yeah. stuff with that but i mean it's also panic button who was yeah, doing who those it. conversions yeah, right, right. as well um i think that is more for people who've never touched those games and like the only way they'd ever touch them you put it on a switch yeah oh, okay it's on there but i think if you ask anyone who's a like a veteran of those series oh yeah they would rather play it on almost any sure other platform pc deal. Switch. Yeah, yeah yeah it's it, it's it's neat to see and it, but i think it does show it's like possible but like it's like doom it, it comes with like significant cost hindrance yeah, yeah. yeah. um but they're still updating that it yeah. just got like yeah, a new, new patch, patch and stuff for like 25th they're still trying like and i think they're still figuring it out i wonder if in another year with advancements like how impressive a port job might be for like a, a more upscale game will we actually see something that we thought wasn't possible to be done on switch scale to look decent on switch and come out day and date the but, funny thing that I just thought about, actually, um, well, is because, yeah, like, optimization and how you design your game and the graphic style is obviously very important, but kind of back to your comment about when the PS5 mm-hmm. and whatever come out, those are leaning on cloud computing, and the Switch is basically the perfect receptacle for cloud computing, like you were saying <laughs> with, with Resident Evil 7 and stuff. Like, this thing is built, I mean, not, not purpose-made, but if they were thinking forward, you know, this thing could play anything if it's being housed in a server farm, you know, like every game could come to I the mean, switch. Yeah. It would be great. That, that's, that's possible. I just don't know what, especially Nintendo right. themselves, what they've shown off in terms of their online capabilities. Right. I don't have much faith. That would be, the, that would be the, that would be the weak that's, link. Yeah. For yeah sure. That is, yeah. yeah. That's what put a damper on the whole thing. But yeah, again, I think also developers probably wouldn't want to do it if you have to have Nintendo Online to to access it. They would go around. Yeah, that, it, I'm sure. there's some. Yeah, because Fortnite doesn't. You don't have to, right? Yeah, like we don't know right. yet whether the new consoles is gonna be like part of a subscription that you have to pay yeah. for, or be that'll be like the base level free is that you get access to your games on that, but like you pay more. We have no idea, but yeah, yeah, that was a great point, Brad. Because I think once we hit that next gen launch window. You're going to start seeing, like, uh, I think you see, like, less of these efforts made on Switch mm-hmm. in favor of pushing stuff on the new hardware. I think those, you're going to see a divide. Mm-hmm. I, I think if Switch is still selling well and still there's a lot of, like, money to be ba- made there, I think you'll see dedicated games released still on Switch no, and third yeah. parties. Oh, for sure. But I think we'll, there'll be more of a segregation between, like, the, the multi platform games that are on PC, let's just call it Xbox 2 and PS5, Xbox yeah. Velvet, whatever. And then they won't; those won't come to Switch, right. and we'll see that divide get bigger and bigger over time. And that's where I would like say draw the line. Mm-hmm. But uh, that that's it for the Game Awards, um, pretty much. You know, there were plenty of uh, there were other announcements for like non Nintendo stuff, yeah. but uh, you'll probably hear about it on the the weekly Easy Allies podcast. Yeah. Most of that stuff this week. Um, but I want to move on, and I want to talk about uh, E three real quick. Oh, okay. Um, because I've heard uh, of it. Reggie Fils May was recently interviewed by IGN. Uh, they sat down and had a chat, and the subject of the importance of E3 came up with Nintendo. And it's important to put context around this because Sony uh, announced uh, recently that they were pulling out of E3 2019. Yeah. Uh, we, we don't know if it's long term. We don't know like the details. There's a lot of presumptions about that. Speculation about whether PS5 is being announced next year and they're doing their own thing. Who knows? They're gonna have E4. Yeah. So like <laughs> across e- the street. No. Yes. E5 for PS5. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. E5, baby. E5. P5. Five dimensions. With Persona 5 come to Switch announced mm, acting yeah, there yeah. Sony's thing. <laughs> um, like, I think uh, Sony would still admit that like E3 is still very valuable to them and stuff, but it was nice to hear from uh, another one of the big three, uh, one of their executives, comment on how important E3 is because there was some speculation 
a knee jerk reaction is that E three might be doom and gloom situation again. Right. Yeah. Like we were like a decade ago, a little over a decade ago when it went away for a little while. So um, the exact quote from Reggie uh, Fiza May about the importance of E three, uh, he said E three. Those five days is the opportunity for the world to find out what's new for video games as entertainment. And during that time, we generate more engagement than pretty much anything else, whether it's CES or Comic-Con or any other big entertainment event. People tune in to find out what's new and have first playable experiences for our industry. That is why E3 is important to Nintendo. So they see like the largest engagement during that those five days didn't like any Absolutely. other major event there. Yeah. That's a big deal. And uh, I'm kind of curious. Like, yeah, Straw Hat Ninja has a question. Basically, greeting his allies. Nintendo recently said E3 is still important to them, even though Sony is pulling out this year. I'm sure Nintendo will have a direct like every other year. But with one less competitor, what does Nintendo need to do to win E3 this year? Um, I guess... You know, maybe they don't say win, but like, do you think they're gonna do their same thing as usual, uh, or do you think they're gonna do? Something, do you think they're gonna do something sp- like special because there's one less, you know, player involved in mm. terms of like the the press conference rotation? I don't think they'll do anything different. It'll be the same old the, your 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 direct, then yeah. your treehouse after kind of thing, and play on the show floor. Big old booth, yeah. And I think they'll just get even more attention than ever because they want to compete with Sony. Like, obviously, Microsoft will still be there, but having one person out makes a huge difference. And I think what you might see just in the just in the differing development cycles, like, Sony, basically, if they did E3, I can't remember, Kyle, somebody said this, but, like, if they did E3, it would be basically the same four games they talked about last year. Right. Or earlier this year. Yeah. Ghost Again, Sush- it'd be yeah. Ghost of Tsushima, Tsushima Last of Us 2, Last of Us 2 Death Stranding, Death Stranding, Maybe smack a little Days Gone in there, whatever. Um, I think it'll be out by then. And, I think, oh yeah, and, and then his dreams out by then. Oh, uh, we don't, don't know. know. There's no release date. Yeah, and then whatever the other fourth one is, that I can't remember right now. Sekiro, but that'll be out. Yeah, um, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, and like so, their show would just kind of be a rehash, whereas Nintendo might actually be poised in a place to show some of their big stuff, Metroid. Uh, you know some of their other big boys coming mm-hmm. out. Animal Animal Crossing. I think we're gonna see. Yep. Yeah. And like you know, so they're in a spot. They're in like the opposite spot of Sony, where I don't think they'll do anything different, but they're definitely gonna have things to show. Right. I think all Sony's newer stuff they're working on is behind the PS5 wall. Right. So if they're not showing that yet, then they won't probably show it. And so yeah, it'd just be the same stuff we saw again. Right. Like Sony's not. I think they determined that they're not ready to show all their new stuff. Right. Because they aren't ready to show the PS5 by E3. So that they yeah, can, so that they can shadow drop it in November. Unless they do, yeah, they do their own weird thing around that time. Yeah, where they just want all attention on them. Like if they do PS, if they do PSX again in December or November of 2019, and it's centered around PS5 and all these huge games coming out, like whatever. Yeah, I think that that seems to be what might be happening here. So, yeah. I think Nintendo's in a good spot, and the lack of other huge announcements it can can only be good mm-hmm. for them yeah it'll be interesting i wonder i mean there's lots of speculation sony perhaps sony got wind that they found out they know when microsoft's gonna announce their new console and maybe they found out it's gonna be at e3 yeah and maybe they don't want to like compete with like that they want their own event who knows but i think it's interesting for nintendo because there are a lot of like known quantities in terms of like what we expect to be there you mentioned a few like animal crossing metroid pokemon 2019 yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah um yeah. There, there's definitely at least three high-profile titles that we expect Huge there. Huge games. Um, there's also expectations, at the very least, uh, that some like other stuff probably needs to be there. Um, it's going to be over two years since we've had an announcement of any kind of any new Zelda. I was going to say, yeah, and Zelda, uh, that's yeah. going to be like one of the longest gaps from an announcement. Not even a release; it's an announcement of anything new officially. Um, there's also the Wall Street Journal Japan's report from earlier this year that there is a. Uh, an update to the Switch hardware coming in second right. half of 2019. I forgot about that. And we don't know if that's going to be a focal point of their so E3 weird. presentation as well. So maybe all three companies are going to be having new hardware to talk about in the year. So definitely, I and I know I agree. I don't think Nintendo's going to do anything special, uh, mm-hmm. like different right. in terms of it. It'll still be direct it'll to still Treehouse. Be special, Tommy, they're definitely able to. <laughs> they're all three of them. They're very special. Um, <laughs> but I wanted to ask, like, I wanted to wrap up this segment by asking. Uh, 
you know, thinking back to when Nintendo announced their big change from ditching uh, live press conferences and going to this format. Press conference, yeah. Um, the Direct. Um, I, I, I think it's like hard pressed to disagree with that like decision with them. I don't yeah. know why all of them don't do it. That, that, like, that, that, that's, yeah, that's like, ask at this I, point. Do I don't you, remember. Like, yeah. I don't remember what my initial reaction was with when they announced directs. Maybe I was like, oh, but press conferences though. And but now I'm just like, why is anyone doing something that isn't just a direct? You seem it would save you so much money. And like, sure, you don't get to have a thousand people in the room and see that reaction. But I I can't see that being that valuable to them. <laughs> Ian, but I don't know. I think times have changed that all that comes from just different places now. Yeah. The reactions and cheering come from like people like us or right. other people who right. react online. It makes it that much easier if you don't have to be there in person to like, you know, so many more people can cover it because, you know, it's being streamed now. Whether that's live or not doesn't change that, right. but like that helps that. But it helps journalists and people who cover the industry when you don't have to travel there, sit there, try and do like updating from like a seat, you know, with like mm-hmm. somebody around you. When you can do it from the comfort of your office or home, or whatever, a direct like presentation means you don't have to be there in person. There's no physical place to go. Well, it makes it easier on the industry to do their yeah. jobs. And like from a production standpoint, y- there's no risk of anything weird and bad happening. Yeah. Uh, like even if the stream buckles, you just like throw it on YouTube. It's fine. Like, and you can make a direct for thousands of dollars instead of hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yep. And like, you know, I've always been, I've said this before, but like even back when we worked at Viacom and it was like, they were doing burger bashes and stuff. I'm like, give us this money. I know like tax write offs, it's different, but it's just like, you know, it feels like a waste. And I, I don't like to see companies just wasting money. You sure, know? Yeah. I'm like, put that money into better things for me. Yeah. You know? And like, obviously press conferences and stuff are good for for us because we react to them but like i i think i think that a sony direct or an xbox direct would be just as hype as a sure yeah maybe even maybe more hype cuz i mean i think back to the best press conference that i can recall and that's sony's from uh 2015 yeah whatever yeah, yeah. like when they had all the god of war stuff and it was basically just oh it was they had the orchestra okay. right yeah, and it yeah. was basically just it was basically a direct because it was just thing after thing after thing after thing with music and it was a really well-oiled machine and a beautiful show and basically it was a direct but just with some stuff on a stage sometimes. Yeah, there was and like, the flow of it definitely Yeah, like that. and yeah. it's like, so they, that's the best one and you could do that kind of hype stuff in a video. Mm-hmm. Devolver does videos, obviously. Uh, Bethesda freaking freaking should do videos. One year they did a direct, but they had a stage for it, which was very strange. <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why anybody doesn't do just directs. You can work in things that aren't possible in the live presentation. I mean... Like Star Fox like puppets. People, like there are people, yeah, like the yeah, Star Fox puppets and the... Uh, uh, robot chicken stuff yeah yeah like before you do collab like cool collaborations like that um and some of the things people worry that wouldn't be there like you can still have a concert yeah, or like a live yeah. concert just have the orchestra playing music and go like shoot them at a place and working right. in like like imagine like you had like a composer from a game like hi i'm here at like whatever symphony and stuff and you know i'm here to introduce this and they start playing the music and stuff and like you don't need a live crowd reaction for that yeah. right it, well and like yeah. you can you can have your cake and eat it too. Like, let's say you're Microsoft or Sony or whatever. And like, yeah, I do understand that having the press conference is a really good reason to get a bunch of industry people in the same room. And that does have value. And obviously that's important. And you do want those live reactions. Yeah. But like, just have a direct and a party, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe screen the direct at the party, but you don't need to stream the party. You know, you can have both. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I feel like that used to be the old argument. I think in the whole like argument for why live press conferences needed to happen at E3 was uh, it was something about like the the big boys like the the CNNs and the covering it. Yeah, the, oh. the USA like today the, whatever. New yeah, York stuff Times, like that. that stuff. Yeah, Gets NBC more attention, blah 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 maybe? would only pay attention to like something like that because of like the cool reactions like the cheering audience and executives walking out on stage yeah 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 and i don't know if i buy that so much anymore i feel I like things are going anymore. so much yeah i think yeah or if it matters like if cnn no, they definitely still cover it but the, it's, yeah it's but all like digital they don't mm-hmm. need though. right yeah. yeah and also like cnn doing a story about joker and 
being in Smash is like no one watching CNN cares. <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe I mean that's probably wrong, but I mean, yeah. I I, I guess it just wraps into the point that I think like t- times have changed. Yep. Yeah. I, and I think we live on the internet. People now. keep uh, like arguing that like E three needs to change. I think. It just like in terms of press conferences, that's what just needs to be. Everyone just needs to do directs. It potentially lead to more companies doing it. Yeah, like we saw this year, Square Enix came back and did one after being <laughs> right. a few yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if like Capcom did one or Sega did one. You know, right. again, they don't have to be an hour long, like twenty right. minute, thirty minute direct. Just have a day of directs and stuff. Yeah, you and like, like schedule it out, and it's like you're watching TV. It'd be time. awesome. It'd like, be crazy. I'd love that. It would be the sure. very tiring. For I want us. that to like happen and stuff. Well, maybe one day we can convince Valve to come back and make games and <laughs> do it direct. Hey, they made Artifact, all right? I, I hear Artifact was actually good. I don't know. Oh, it was just sad because I was watching the, the No Clip Half Life documentary. <laughs> oh, okay. And the beginning yeah. of it, they just like, yeah, it was a Dan Dwyer talking about how uh, Valve just would not return any of his like yeah. emails oh, no. or calls. They just didn't want not, did not want to talk about Half Life. I just like, want Team Fortress 3, man. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it's good that Nintendo Portal still 3 is stays. what I want. Just three. Oh, you see that thing about the Easter egg, and they're like, Valve's like, that's not a reference to a new Portal game or in something. What? There's some Portal Easter egg in, in something. Artifact? I don't know if it's Artifact, but it was oh. some headline, oh. and they had to clarify it's because of how everything's gone Crazy lately. Rolling. They're like, it's not a reference to a new game. It's just uh. an Easter egg. Chill out. I like Sad. how Miyazaki basically had to say that too. Although I think he's being cute about Bloodborne too. Oh yeah, in uh, Dare Dare Cine. Cine, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's still good to really see Nintendo sees a lot of value in E3. Good, and yeah. I hope they keep good. doing it the way they do. And finally, to wrap this up, we're going to do a quick... Uh, oh, we're almost out of time. The, yeah, we're almost out of time. Uh, Matt uh, Piscatella, a U.S. video game analyst for NPD Group, has been putting out uh, the top lifetime sales for a bunch of old consoles. And uh, this this time, he did the GameCube. Don't tell Kyle that you're doing this. Oh, I bet. Shh. Step on Kyle. his toes. Don't tell Kyle. Kyle loves these NPD. Don't tell Kyle. I hear knocking on the door. He's like, Kyle's like, Damiani, don't you take this from me. Don't you dare take this from me right now. This is mine. Share the wealth. <laughs> Share the wealth. Spread the love. Uh, so I just want to go down the top 10, and I want uh, you two to try and guess real quick okay. what they are. For um, GameCube. For yeah. GameCube. So, yeah. So what do you think is the number one best-selling game of uh, the GameCube ever? Smash. Ian? Oh, yeah. Best-selling, I don't know. I hope Mario Sunshine's on there, but <laughs> not best. I think uh, it'll be on there. Smash, yeah. You both are correct. Yeah. Super Smash Bros. Melee is number one. Yeah. Number two. Number two. Mm, double well, Dash? Was it Double Dash? Yeah, Mario Kart was the Mario Kart. Correct. Yay. Mario Kart Double Dash. Yeah. Number three. Sunshine. Uh, what? Zelda was Twilight Princess, so it was like weird. Well, Wind Waker as well. Oh, Wind Waker. Uh, yeah, let's go Sunshine. You both are correct. Yes. Hell yeah. Number four. Now I'll say Wind Waker. Yeah. Correct. Holy crap. Look at this. Four <laughs> for four. All right, number five. Now it's getting harder. Mm, number five. Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4? No, I don't think it's number five. Or too high. Yeah, maybe too high. Shoot. I don't know, man. Pick something. Oh, GameCube. Uh, sure, Resident Evil 4. Whatever. All right. Nah. Oh. Number five, Luigi's Mansion. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess it's a launch, launch game, title. Yeah. Uh, number six. <laughs> Rogue Squadron. Whoa. Uh, I don't even know. I can't, I'm blanking now. Think of uh, I mean, think of like popular series and stuff. There's always like an entry on GameCube and stuff from either first or th- mostly third party. Not all third parties are on there. Hmm. Tick tock. Yeah, tick. I don't know. All right, number six, Metroid Prime. Oh wait, oh, I was gonna say is Metroid oh, Prime. I totally on there? forgot about Prime. Yeah, nice. I played them on the Wii, so I don't. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I Number didn't seven. know that they came out on there. There's seven, dude. I'll give you hints this time. It is this is a first party series. Uh, Kirby. It debuted in North America on this platform, but it debuted in Animal Japan. Crossing. Oh yeah. All right. Number eight, a third party series. An iconic third party series. Iconic. Is it Resident Evil then? Nope. Dang it. Is it a fighting game? Nope. A mascot. Sonic? S- Sonic? Oh, Sonic. is it the the, uh, the the like the remake of the Dreamcast one or the whatever version Sonic it's called? Adventure, DX? Sonic. Is that what it is? Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Sonic I forgot. Adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost there. Number nine. Uh, first party game. Came out very late. One of the last first party Twilight games. Princess? Twilight Princess. Yeah. yeah, it's gotta be. Number yeah. ten. One of the greats. One of the greats. From RE4? Resident Evil 4? 
Shoot, Damn. dude. GameCube game? One of the actual greats? Hall of Greats entry. Shoot, oh, what's what are the Hall of Greats? What are they? Oh, no. Besides Resident Evil Remake. Oh, no. What is it? First Party? First Party. Paper Mario? Oh, and the Thousand, thousand Year Door. door. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, duh. All right. So you guys kept saying wow, that Resident was Evil. 10? F- yep. Wow. You kept saying Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 clocked in at number 18. Nah, Still see. pretty good. Okay. On GameCube. I beat it on Let's GameCube and Wii. Oh, please, Toy Princess in the top 10. Yeah, good oh, yeah. job. Especially since it came out later yeah, on sold. GameCube. Good job, TP. It, did sell, it sold out, pretty much, yeah. of its run. It only did one print run of that. How long after... Did it come out on the Wii at the same time? No, no, it was like a month later. Yeah, it was like a month, later. Yeah, a month it, later. It came out a month after. Because I remember waiting. Yeah, it came out a month a after, GameCube. and so. there were roughly like... One or two million copies available for sale, like worldwide, I think. Oh wow! And they like sold out of all of them, but Jeez. still sold pretty well. Got one still. Yeah, got one too. Three versions of that good game. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna wrap it up. Fun stuff. Yay! That was a good ass. Thank you for yeah, joining for me this us. week, and thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Thanks, this week everybody. For uh, episode of Friend Code, if you'd like to submit a question for consideration for a future episode of Friend Code, uh, you need to be a five dollar and up patron. And the, the week that we are recording episode, I will make a Patreon post calling for your Q&A submissions. Um, I will also tell you the topics we will be discussing on that week's episode. So keep those questions related to the topic. I saw some people get a little bit more sneaky and creative this time. Like yeah. talking about Joker and then going into a complete tangent oh, about something you? else. How dare you? I was like, <laughs> nope, not, not going to get past me this time. But uh, yes. if you That's just, our job. We yeah. go on the tangents yes. yeah. here. <laughs> keep them on topic keep them concise better chance that you'll get selected for that and also if you're a five dollar patron you get this episode uh, and other episodes of our easy allies content early uh this episode or sorry episodes of friend code go up sundays uh for early access for patrons uh tuesday for if you're watching this on tuesday it means you're a public but anyone who does give us any amount for patreon thank you so much for supporting us and making our content possible uh, thank you both for joining me again yeah. this week. Of course. And until next time, may the way of the hero lead to the Triforce.